Hey there, I'm Tiffany Youngren, host of Next Up Nation, where we help podcasters and YouTubers with vision become preeminent le thought leaders in their industries. You are about to have the opportunity to listen as we dig into the why, who, and what of a podcaster show. Then stay tuned because at the end, we're going to identify one powerful how, one action that he can take for results in the next 30 days. Today, I am so excited to welcome Mitch Beinhacker, host of The Accidental Entrepreneur. Hey, Mitch, welcome. Hello. Hey, thanks for coming. Uh, the Accidental Entrepreneur has released 160 episodes from February 29th until the day of this recording, which is July 14th of 2021. Mitch is a corporate attorney and business advisor who runs a so solo legal and consulting practice representing business owners, entrepreneurs, executives, and professionals. And I, I have to say, I love your show. So I'm so excited to have Thanks. you here. Yeah. So, I so why, <laughs> you, you, I'm sure you have a lot of them. <laughs> uh, why did you start the accidental entrepreneur? Um, well, two reasons. One, I mean, I, just like you, I listen to tons and tons of podcasts and as a lawyer, we're kind of bad at like digital marketing and, you know, putting out content. And we put up these billboards that not billboards, put up these websites that are like billboards on a highway that nobody's driving down. It's just like informational stuff. So one day, I think I, it must've been like a Pat Flynn video or, you mm. know, something like that, where it was like, you can start a podcast for 75 bucks. I was like, don't you need like a studio with like boom mics and sound people and stuff like that. So we bought, I had partners at the time. And we bought the, uh, I feel like I tell the story all the time, but we bought the equipment. It was really crappy. You listen to the early days. I like had to clean up all the audio. It was like with this little USB mics and things. So then um, I was like, well, what, what am I going to do? Like, what am I going to say? I don't want to like talk and like write a script like every week or so or month or whatever I was doing it then. Now we do twice a week. So I didn't really know what to do. And I had a lot of uh, clients who would come to me, small business owners, and as the lawyer, they come to you like, I mean, sometimes they come at the beginning, but often they come like, I got a problem. Like I got to close the business or whatever. And I'm like, what do you mean? Didn't you just open like six months ago? So there was a lot of that cleanup. So then I was talking to my friend, Jack, who's my guest for my first two episodes, by the way, um, amazing story. If you hear his whole thing, which half of which I didn't even know, even though I knew him a very long time. And I said, come to my office. We're going to do this podcast. And he's like, well, what's a, what's a podcast? Because he's the one who introduced me to Zoom. He's like 80 years old. But so <laughs> wow. like for two and a half hours, we, he told me his whole life story. And he turns out he went to my high school, not when I was born, but and the whole thing. So I made it, <clears throat> excuse me, into two episodes because two and a half hours is much too long. I'm not Joe Rogan. <laughs> and I started from there. And I'm like, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to interview people. I find people interesting. They have good stories to tell. Half of them don't think that, but they do. They have good things to share with people. I don't have to prepare a lot in all honesty, right? So I don't, I don't have to make up all these questions. And so I just take them through their story. And then the accidental name came from, I think I saw, remember that movie, The Accidental Tourist mm -hmm. with William yeah. Hurt? There must've been like something posted on Netflix or whatever. And I'm trying to think of a name and I'm like, that's it. The Accidental Entrepreneur, like that's what these people are doing. They're like going to business by accident because they get laid off. They're failing because they don't do anything like purposeful, which you were talking about before, like doing things purposefully to push your business forward. And that's like where the name came from. And it just kind of stuck. That's awesome. That is so good. And it, you know, one of the things I read, I can't remember if I read it or saw it on your show, but you had mentioned that, you know, you're, you're an attorney who works with businesses. And like you kind of yeah. alluded to is that, you end up talking to them after something happens yeah. instead of being able to have them be a little bit more deliberate so that those things don't happen. Yeah. <laughs> like Cause a we bit go of... to doctors when we're sick and we go to lawyers when we have legal problems, we generally don't do it the other way around. So, so it probably feels good just being able to be proactive in that yeah. journey from there. From well, I feel like I'm doing that with the podcast, trying to put information out there, just like you're doing to get people to kind of do things the right way to start. And then, Maybe they won't, they'll have more of a chance of success. I'm not going to, I'm an attorney. I'm not going to guarantee anything. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's, being, it's being recorded, but yeah. The big moment, right? <laughs> yeah, there we go. That, that I don't usually do gotchas, but no. <laughs> exactly. Right. Awesome, I'm awesome. on the hot seat. 
<laughs> so um, one of the things that you told me before your interview is uh, the one thing that you wanted from your show is to help entrepreneurs make better decisions with their business. Right. Um, number one, why do you think that that's so important? And number two, can you give me an example of that? Sure. Well, um, it's very important because like I said, a lot of people just you know, they dive in, they don't really plan things. They don't have strategic plans. They don't have written plans, forget about it. And, and as a lawyer, you know, that's my pet peeve. You have to do business if you're a professional. I don't mean a professional like a doctor or a lawyer, but if you're a professional and you're doing this like for a living, you have to do it in writing. I mean, you got to do, you have to have client agreements and you have to have vendor agreements and you have to have a partnership ag or agreement and you have to have a business plan. It doesn't have to be graphs and charts. It could be parts of a business plan, something you work off of and write your ideas down and journal and, you know, things like that. So people, you know, need to kind of take it seriously when it, if it's a hobby, that's fine. But if it's a really, really a business you want it to be and you want to be successful, people have failed and they, it is a high rate of failure in business. And generally it's because people just don't take the time to learn the things they need to do to be successful. They're not things that you and I like are special at and other people can't do them. It's just that mm -hmm. they don't do it. And you had mentioned before about creativity and I'm the same way. Entrepreneurs, we're all right brain and we're, we're doing our marketing and making our website. We're all excited and this and that, but we don't take the time to look at the data, to put the numbers together, to figure out, oh, this is a great idea, but I'm not even, I can't even make money if I price it this way and, and, and learn those things. And it, and it ends up being too late. Hmm. So the one piece of advice I can give people is that if they come up with a business idea, a thought, they're working with somebody, they want to start a business, as early as possible, sit down and start to write a business plan. There's simple templates out there. There's the lean canvas, one page type of thing. I have a four part, you know, template that I've boiled down to score has a very good template. Mm -hmm. So just, it doesn't have to be complete, but it's a start. It's a place where you can go back to and not forget the ideas you had, and maybe they didn't work and work through those ideas. People don't do that. They don't do the market research. They don't ask the questions. Hmm. You know, they've come up with a product and you open your store and your best friend walks in and says, oh, Tiffany, I just saw that on eBay like three <laughs> weeks ago. And you're like, you did? And now what, <laughs> you know, now what do you do? So there's a lot of that. So, yeah. you know, be purposeful and plan things, be a planner. And I know not everybody's like that, but if you want to be successful, those are the things you have to get good at. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So um, one of the things that I, that we talked about beforehand is that I'll be going through the why, who, and what of your show. So sure. I love your why. I think it's so helpful. I could not agree more. Um, you know, I've been an entrepreneur for a really, really long time by now. And, um, and I've helped a lot of entrepreneurs and I would, you know, wholeheartedly agree and appreciate that you do that. So let's talk a little bit about your um, ideal audience. Have you really identified, speaking of doing research and a, yeah. and a business plan, who is your ideal listener? In my mind, my ideal listener is um, somebody looking to get started in business or they're a small business owner and they're looking for ideas and stories about people that have tried things and have failed or have failed their way to success and the advice that they can get in the podcast as to who I'm reaching. That's like the hardest analytics is who you're reaching, you know? So, I mean, I'm reaching people all over the world. There's no question about it. I, I don't know if it, you know, I don't know who's listening. I, I know a lot of people are listening and I know who I bring on the show and I know why I do it. I just, I don't know if, uh, if I'm reaching the, the right audience, you try and put, you know, the keywords and the, this and the, that on it. So hopefully people search for entrepreneurship and, you know, small business advice and things like that. And maybe the right people listen, but that's my ideal, mm -hmm. you know, person that I'd like to reach the person. So they make the right decisions early on. Yeah. Well, and that's ultimately what we have control over, right. Is who we want to listen to our show. Yeah. And so, so that's, the that's one thing we focus right? on is like the, you know, cause you can gear your messaging towards those people. Yeah. And of course you're going to attract a broader audience than that. Right. Um, the more targeted we are really the more attracted people are to what we have to say. So I think that that's really good. So, so, um, so your, your target audience are people who are thinking of starting a show or thinking yeah, of starting a business or they are starting a show. Yeah. They, yeah. <laughs> <Or show. laughs> yeah. People have started. No, also people that have been in business for a while okay. and they don't feel like they have a good grip on their business. 
um, and they want to be more purposeful and increase the chance of them being successful and learn from the people that are coming on the show, whether they're marketing people, inventors, other entrepreneurs, authors, you know, things like that. And I think, I think your point's a good one. I think that people, um, what they, what they try to do is, um, to, you know, learn from all the things that are out there. And I hope that the message that I'm putting out is, you know, fits that, that kind of genre. And I think that, like you had said, being purposeful or not being purpose, tailoring the stuff you put out there and your message and the people you bring on the show and paying attention to that. I learned on very early on that if you want to be successful in podcasting, you should stick to your message. You should make sure that the people come on, on as the show don't kind of take you off the rails because that's how you lose your audience. You know, then they're yeah. like, Oh, I don't want to learn about watermelon growing in Wisconsin. <laughs> so I'm not going to listen anymore. Just because they asked on Facebook, if they could be on your show, they shouldn't necessarily be on your yeah, show. I've right? Had, yeah. I definitely have turned down people. <laughs> well, first of all, people that I don't know anything about what they do and it's not, it's not really a business. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll show them how to guest and to go on other shows and whatever, but I don't. And then there's some people that I've met who are just, you know, kind of, Putzing around, I say, is my terms. And <laughs> yeah. So I, I, yeah. I just don't think I can make a good show out of it. So therefore, I won't bring them on. You know. Well, and that's really the, where the message comes in, like you were saying, where if you know what you're. Sh- so in fact, that leads me into the next part, where what I call the audience promise. Okay. So typically, if we have something where we're like, you know, if you listen to my show for any length of time, you're going to go from here to here. So. F- the first part of that is just understanding, well, number one, understanding our audience, but then number two, understanding what problem you're solving for them. Yeah. Do you have, do you have kind of an idea of the problem that you're solving for your ideal audience? Yeah, I think that if you listen to a lot of the episodes, cause we had said I'd, I've done recorded, I don't know, 180 some odd, so 160 or out or something like that. Um, a lot of it's been a learning process for me too. I probably could write a book on all the lessons learned. I probably should write a book, like a hundred <laughs> lessons learned or something or first hundred guests or, but yeah, I think that there, there are, you know, things that as a business owner, you can do and they're consistent in terms of being successful. And you see that with people who are successful in multiple businesses. Like there are people that, and I may be getting a little bit off your question, but mm-hmm. there are people that are good at one thing. Like they figure out whatever it is, the business that they're running. And then when they sell the business or the industry changes or whatever, and they shift, they buy a new business or they start a new business, they're not that successful. So I hope that the people that are listening and and the message that I'm getting across is, you know, consistent enough to give them the skills and the tools to be able, you know, to apply it to almost any kind of business, you know, and, and, and a lot of it comes with, like I mentioned before, and I speak about this all the time, I'm working on a book um, with a co-author called 10 ways to get sued by anyone and everyone. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, it's funny. It's, it's, well, he, he's doing this 10 ways series. So we came up with like a funny name, a catchy name, but it's about the things that you should do. So you don't get into trouble. Um, and I consistently see people doing things off the cuff, like mm-hmm. off, they rely on their memory. And it's been proven that our memories are very fallible, very inconsistent. We don't have this like filing cabinet in our head. We have like a box where things get thrown in and now there's sticky notes in there and they get stuck to the wrong memories. And, you know, you and I swear that this is what we, you know, we're arguing over what our agreement is. And you really believe what you're saying. And I really believe what I'm saying, but our minds don't, you know, work uh, properly. I was with a friend of mine. I haven't seen in years. We went to high school. We actually knew each other from third grade and his wife I went to college with. We were talking about things and I was like, really? Did that? Is that how it happened? Like we totally had different memories of things that happened. And that's one of the mistakes that business owners make. You have to make it a habit to do whatever you're doing in writing mm. with your partner, with your business plan, with the people that you do business with. I've had people say to me, oh, you know, I feel uncomfortable working with a client or a customer, like whipping out this agreement. So I said, well, first of all, if you look at it that way, like you're whipping something out, that's not going to go well. So you need to develop a process that you're comfortable with where you bring up the contract, which says what you charge and when you can waive it. And just because you waive it doesn't mean they don't know it in the future and when they can cancel and when they can't cancel and all those types of things, because they all get in trouble. They get in trouble with customers because it's not in writing. Big, big, yeah. big problem. 
Yeah. Well, and you know, it's so true because after a while you realize that that moment they're like, I would never forget that this is what we talked about. You're right. like, and that's what they say. Know. And they're probably wrong anyway, but they're <laughs> yeah. so adamant. Yeah. Look, I remember because we were walking here and that bird <laughs> shit dropped on your head. And yeah. so I remember. Yeah. Still probably not right, by the way. So hundred yeah. percent. Okay. So do you know, so, so what, just so that I have, I make sure that I'm really clear. What is the problem that you're solving for your ideal, your ideal listener? Yeah. I don't know if it's, if it's the same for all the, all the listeners. Um, it's really, you know, I am, I am trying to help people increase their chances of being successful. Okay. Like that's the goal of the show. And so the most, advice for everybody's going to fail be like, and you're trying to bridge that gap so that they're yeah, not it's one 50%, of them. Right. Because they don't do things planned out. So maybe I'm helping to make them better planners to put things in writing. I mean, everybody's got kind of a different problem, but the problem is their success rate is very low. Mm-hmm. So and ultimately the problem is, is you don't want them to fail. Like you yeah, don't want ultimately. Them- yeah. To get a hold yeah. of that's the tagline I think we where we share I, I, our ideas and help you get a hold of your business. Got it. Because people are just you know you know the way it is. You walk into your business one day and everything's on fire. Yeah. And you had in your mind like four or five things you were going to do and you don't get to any of them. <laughs> yeah. 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 Better habits, you know, form better habits to be successful. Love it. Love it. Yeah. So um, and then. And, and sorry, I keep doing this. I, no. I just, for myself, I believe the audience promise is one of the best things we could do for our show, because I feel like number one, we know who we're talking to. It's right. kind of like on when we're on social media and we're just talking to everybody, we're talking to nobody, you know, yeah. literally you feel it. Like you see those posts, you're like, you know, you're just shouting Doesn't out to the sky. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And, um, and you know, good content will carry a show but an audience promise fulfilled will really, um, accelerate that. Like it really takes it is like, because then it's like, you are the Sherpa, (laughs) you know, you're, you're the one that people are ready to follow because you're like, Oh, they're like, Oh, you get me. Number one, you know who I am. You see me. And number two, um, this is where I'm at right now. And then that's where I want to go. Like, I want to jump over that bridge with you because I believe you can get me there. And yeah. I know with your show, like you interview amazing people. Um, again, the episodes that I listened to, the content was amazing. Um, great tips, just really actionable. And the people that you interview are, uh, very, uh, knowledgeable in the area as are you, which makes for better, you know, we all know, like if, if you, you know, you know, um, the, the entrepreneurial space, but you're bringing on experts that you're able to ask better questions because you right. know enough about sure. it. So no, but so, that's, yeah, that's good advice because I'm probably not promise. that, <laughs> but that's probably something that I could work on because I think that's good advice. I don't know if I'm that clear, like in my mind, I know what the promise is and I know what I'm talking about, why we're sharing this information, but Maybe it would be more helpful to listeners to be more clear about that. Yeah. That's well, good advice. Even, I appreciate it. Even knowing yourself, like even to go, um, you know, cause you do solve different problems, but ultimately it solves one problem. So it's like, yeah, there's no you, know, question you can have it. a map and there are 10 roads that are going to get you to the same place. Yeah. As long as you're going to the same town, right. <laughs> you know, as long as you're going in the right direction. Exactly. That same kind of concept. So one person might need help with contracts. One person might need help with mindset when we all need help with mindset, but, um, you know, as long as all those roads are leading in the same direction, then someone knows that they can flip on your show and that's going to take them to that same place. Somehow it might just be a different topic so that they're not listening to it going, I don't want to hear about contracts. Like this is an attorney. And of course he's talking about contracts, you know, Um, but you don't just talk about that and you talk about that, but you it's relevant. And so by giving it more holistic approach, approach is what you're doing. Um, it makes the contracts relevant because a business in business needs contracts, you know, Yeah, you gotta <laughs> so, put things in writing. So awesome. Okay. Okay. Well, let's, um, real quick before I move off of the who part of things, um, what do you do now to evaluate whether or not your content is resonating? Have you made adjustments based on, uh, any feedback that you've gotten? How's your engagement yeah. been? Um, yeah, I mean, my engagement has more been through my networks of people, you know, because I network and connect with people, well, now all over the world because of Zoom. And I do get a lot of feedback on guests. Um, 
sometimes I wish people were more honest. I, I mean, not everybody can love everything they hear on the show. They're like, I love your show. I'm like, well, that's great. Do you have any criticisms or, <laughs> you know, anything you didn't like? And I do get some people that say, well, I didn't love that guest or, um, you know, I, there was somebody who had posted something totally anonymously. I don't know. It was something like you talk too much. <laughs> I'm like, and it was, it was one of those episodes where I kept kind of interrupting the guy because he was going all over the place. Like, (laughs) and, and I knew consciously, it was funny that I got that feedback because I knew consciously this show was like going off the rails, you know, and I would pull it back and then make a comment, whatever. So, but uh, yeah, I mean, I try to give feedback all the time whenever I'm talking to people, meeting people, when I guest on other shows, I like to see what they do. I, I also participate in a couple of podcasts, uh, um, things, um, not only the online ones, have you heard of pod max global? No, uh, the guys at pod. Oh, I'll have to connect you with, uh, Josh and, uh, and Eric over there. That's uh, <laughs> on air brands and pod max is like a day where actually you could probably be one of our keynote speakers where, uh, we spend a day now on zoom, you interview three people and then, um, there's a speaker, and, or you could also be a host. So you could, you could, I mean, you could also be a guest. So you either guest on three podcasts, or you could be a host and interview three people. Plus, there's all kinds of breakout rooms and things like that. So, okay, fun, a fun day. Yeah. I'll connect you off offline. Yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. Yeah. So, how do you measure your audience? I don't know. How do we measure an audience? Teach me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that question. Cause I, I, it's so loaded. I'm always just sitting here going, Oh, yeah. I mean, I how do, that's a good question. I've asked people that question. They don't know. Like, you, I don't know from my analytic, like, how do I measure my own? I know I've had about eight or 9,000 downloads over the two years, but I would yeah. get like four or 500 downloads a month. I have no idea. How do you do that? Tell me. Well, Tiffany, what's well, the secret? Ultimate, okay. So now there's no silver bullet. So I'm just going to okay. say that first, as we all know, podcasting, it feels like a minute ago was brand new. And people were asking us when we'd be, when we asked them to be on their show, our show, right. we, they would say, what's a podcast? Why would right. I want to be on of a podcast? Course. Yeah. And then that lasts now- like 12 seconds. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so then it, um, then the great pivot of 2020 came and everybody is doing a podcast. So yeah. the beauty of that is that the analytics are improving. Our technologies are improving very, very rapidly. So right. what I say right now will probably change in a By month. By the time the episode comes out, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but with that, I, w- I will say that number one, um, analytics, it's kind of, I'm not one of those who's ever been chasing algorithms. I've been doing SEO for a long time. If you have good content, you're reaching the right people. Yeah, that's if the you're best, getting, right? if you're getting leads and you're making money and you're getting the right kind of clients, people are contacting you and you're like, thank you. You're exactly the right person <laughs> to be listening yeah, to my show. Yeah, and you know you're doing it right, right? I, I don't care if I have a thousand or 520, quite honestly. Right. Uh, all I need are just a few people that I get in touch with that I'm making relationships with. I used to do a show. I talked to you before beforehand about our real estate show and I only cared about who was listening for my guests. Like for myself, I only wanted to meet my guests. Right, <laughs> and right. And so, so, but I, you know, we do a lot of promotion. So for that- I didn't even, I wasn't even watching downloads as I was watching how much social media are we getting out there? You know, so being able to have a podcast and create all this content, you know, we had a blog and social media and websites that we developed and and email campaigns. We were always making editorial calendars and all this. And then um, I had a, um, an inspection company that we had for a client. We were, and and it was in Northwest Washington and Mm -hmm. we had to do articles on mold, because guess what? It's the biggest problem in an inspection is mold. One of yeah. the biggest, well, there's a lot, but yeah, there's a lot. no, but that's a big problem. issue. Yeah. And every time we would use high level sources for all of our articles and it never was right. They were always just like, no, that's not how we handle it. You know, I don't care that that's what this organization, you know, like it was on the today show or, you know, right. or if it was on, um, some study, like they have their own studies and you know, this is who they listen to. So right. finally I interviewed them. And I, I did a couple interviews, I made up a whole bunch of questions because I know what everybody asks about mold and plus we had keywords. And so then um, we wrote a bunch of articles. And so basically with our podcasting, we've done something similar. And so kind of back to the original topic, which is how you measure your audience? Well, it depends on what your goals are. If you, I think downloads are a vanity metric. 
da da the end. Yeah. Like that's they but, gave me a badge when I hit five thousand. <laughs> it wasn't five thousand a month. <laughs> some sponsors yeah. only look at downloads. So right. some, you know, like when I was doing when I was working with real estate agents, they wanted to know how many people am I reaching. That was a beautiful question because I could tell them, well, we get it out on social media. You get social media content. So it's again, it's like anything else we do in business. We're like, what is your problem and how can I solve it? So downloads very rarely, unless it has to do with advertising, solves anybody's problem. Right. Advertisers are ridiculous at that. And I'm just going to say it out loud. It is ridiculous. Well, that learned, that's all right? they care about. <laughs> they yeah. don't know what else to look at. That's all it is. It's like, I don't even know, don't Tiffany, know. if somebody's listening to your podcast, let's say they don't download. So they stream it. Mm -hmm. Do the analytics pick that up as a download? I'm on Libsyn and they count streams. So we can see and maybe Podbean because does too. Okay. I, and one thing we'll lead into and is this whole blog post situation. Like blog posts are the number one way to promote your show the quickest, the longest right. term. They live forever. Yeah. Right. Um, and so you I have can, a blog on my website. I do it all for each episode. Yeah, you have perfect. to, because it's content. They still can't really crawl through audio and video files yet. Right. No. I mean, it needs to be written word. Well, it, I mean, there's, you know, really geeky ways that they do, but that's such a minor thing at the yeah. end of the day, like you can do every piece of metadata and all that kind of geeky stuff. At the end of the day, people are looking for a topic. They're going to find your podcast and they're going to listen to you. So when we embed that player into our blog post, I want to know that that got listened to because we put so much effort into it. Right. So we do get blog. So we're able to see like, okay, so when people are going to our blog post, does that, are we getting as many downloads as we would imagine that we would be getting now having said all that um, numbers matter. So if you're not getting a lot, like when you're starting out, it's just, you're just not going to get a lot of numbers. So of course not. Right. yeah. So your guests are a big, you know, um, big asset when it comes to it. And then, then you lead into the whole numbers thing. So, so that probably didn't really like, that's how I measure downloads. <laughs> like I don't, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I do because I am a sucker, like everybody I'm like, okay, so what's my, you know, I know the average, I think the last time I checked, I don't even know what the app. Yeah, I don't. They ask me the question. I have no idea. It's, it's like 145 in the first 30 days. At one point, yeah. was the average. I think that that's really high. I don't think that that's accurate since the big flood of people into podcasting. But um, anyway, so I'm I'm super happy that you're on that page too. I think that that's the best thing you could have said. Was, yeah, I mean, um, I think it's content <laughs> marketing for me. But now that I've had do, been doing this for two and a half years, I do know that it's valuable to the people coming on. So I always want them to, you know, to look good, to sound good. And then I try to pull a hook out of the, you hear the way I do it. It's like the NPR format or whatever. I pull out a hook at the beginning to like get people interested in the, cause I'm trying to promote their business and then in return it promotes what I'm doing. So I didn't have that at the beginning. You have two episodes out. What are you offering? And 14 people on your mailing list. And I got 2,700 people on my mailing list. So it takes a while. It's definitely a long haul. You got to be committed to it. But mm -hmm. my understanding, Tiffany, is that there, there's not a lot of podcasts that, that stay the course. Mm -hmm. It's only 20 or 30%. A lot of people put out a couple episodes, they do something, they drop off, they stop doing it. The, the people that are really in it, not to win it, but in it to stay in the game and to keep, you know, crafting all this good stuff is, is still a minority portion of the industry. Is yeah, that right or am I wrong? No, you're hundred percent right. Last I checked, it was uh, three out of five quit. There you go. So yeah, right. exactly. <clears throat> But the, you know, I think it's fair to say too, that we have to have some kind of analytics. So when you we're do. looking at it, it's just important to understand that it's not just about downloads. So don't be discouraged. And it, and right. even the most massive podcaster of today had nobody listening for a year. I don't know yeah. if I've heard, I mean, unless you're famous. So I always say like, in fact, I, I try to say this early in, in the uh, interview. Sure Joe like, Rogan started out with are very you few famous? people too. You know? <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. Cause he, he was he a big list when he started. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but at the end of the day in like, I'm not famous. Are you famous? No, not, not so that I'm, I'm going to assume no. if you're listening mind. to the show, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to assume that you're not famous. So this is no. what the rest of us have to do. And, um, even the ones who are getting, you know, six figures downloads, um, they, they started somewhere and they have some story of how they made it past that first year. Right. So at the end of the day, though, too, is we do have to look at something to know, like, are people listening? What are, yeah. what are they responding to? You know, I'm sure that, you know, over this time you've made adjustments. 
Um, ha have you made any adjustments and has it been in response to either feedback or what you've seen in your numbers? Yeah, well, you know, one of the, the data analytics that I do like is like the regional data, the geographic data, like you could see like, wow, this person from Australia downloaded my podcast or somebody from Iceland, you know, that's, it's, it's interesting. But I think along the way, very early on, I got to the point where I said, listen, I have to have like a format as to how I put at least the audio, I don't edit the video, I put it up with a thumbnail and that's it. But the audio side, I was like, well, this is going to kill me to do. And I have some people help me with the, the, vi the video, I mean, the editing, but I mean, I'm a lawyer, I, I don't have a production company. So yeah. some of it I like to do myself. So I, I put together a template as to the way I want to do it. I did some research as to what formats they're out there. That's why I found NPR, you know, how to format a podcast and what they, their opinions were, because I listen to a lot of their podcasts. And um, I came up with this process or this template. So it's basically the same every time, but I do tweak it because now I've put in, now my sponsors are really just affiliate sponsors. They're not people that pay me to do the show. I make money if they sell their products. I make very little, but mm -hmm. those mid-roll commercials and the opening and stuff that I've put together and I, and I've moved those around and adjusted things. But for the most part now, I haven't tweaked a lot of stuff um, in terms of the format for a while. Okay. Not, I told you the idea of doing a series of different industries. I'm doing that, but so far I haven't tweaked the, uh, the format. I just, I have it. It's a checklist. I do it. And I just move on to the next thing. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay. So let's, um, let's talk a little bit about what, so I want to sure. talk about the things that you're doing that are working. Mm -hmm. Um, and what have you seen to be the most effective ways to attract listeners and so far? Yeah. So that's, that's kind of evolved when I, before the pandemic, right. Because I could do things in person. I didn't know what zoom was. Um, I didn't do it on, uh, on video. People would literally like with the, you know, this thing here. So they would come to my office. I got another one at the end of the table. They would sit there. We would record it on audacity. Um, one time I did an hour interview and it wasn't recording and I don't even know how, but we had to redo <laughs> it. And um, then COVID hit. Right. So then we were all locked up. And nobody's coming to my office, certainly. I certainly didn't want them to. Mm -hmm. So I, that's when I discovered Zoom. And now, even when I do a podcast, like in the office with somebody nearby, I have them get on Zoom because I want the video. Right. I've captured all that, all that content. So, so that, that, has, um, that has evolved, I guess, a little bit in terms of how I do that. Um, and then, um, what was the rest of your question? I lost my train I just, of thought. The most effective ways that you've been able to attract listeners. Oh, yeah, right. So then... So, so I get, I have a pretty big network locally, at least I'm, you know, I go to networking events now online, you can go all over the world, but so I get a lot of, I was getting a lot of referrals from other professionals. There's some very good ones. I mean, it's people that seemingly were like little business owners. And I start talking to them. I'm like, oh my God, they had this story where they were like in a coma and they were hit by a truck and then they started this business and wow. crazy things. And then slowly, but surely, and I still get a lot of referrals from people. I'm a little bit more choosy about, I, but I've hit the circuit somehow of uh, bookers. So I get a lot of emails from bookers about guests. I mean, seven out of 10 are good. Depends on what they are, but I'm in that. I just, I don't know. I hit that wheel and I'm like on that merry-go-round, I guess um, for a while. And then, <laughs> and then I also use it as a prospecting tool. So I'll go to an event that's, you know, naming, uh, you know, business owner of the year or whatever in New Jersey, I'll use it as a way to approach people because you can't do that as a lawyer. I right. can't call you up and say, Tiffany, um, do you need a, a new business lawyer? Now you could think that's fine or you could report me to the ethics department. So, <laughs> you know, I don't, so it's a way to approach people. So I do probably those three ways, networking, individual approaches, and I get a lot through um, PR people and, and booking groups. Okay, very good. And then do you, now you mentioned that you have a, a blog and I'm yeah. on, do you keep that on your, um, Vine Hacker Law page or is that on your podcast page? Um, yeah. So the podcast page is just pod, it, pod bean, but it's funny that you brought that up. So I'm, I'm in the process of kind of rebranding. So the pot, the, the podcasting, the speaking, the writing, the blogging was kind of getting lost in the law firm. Which I didn't want that. So coming by the middle of the summer, I'll be launching a new law firm website, new branding, a little bit new colors. And then we'll be working on the MitchellBeinhacker.com personal branding side, 
where the podcast will be highlighted more, speaking, writing, the blogging. I'm still not sure how to do the blogging because some of it's podcasting and some of it's legal stuff. Um, right now it's on the website though. There's a menu that said podcasting. You can go mm -hmm. to the blog and all that, that different stuff. Um, so on the Podbean, you know, the host, you said you use Libsyn. The only thing up there is the, the show notes. So that's not really a blog, but then I take those and I make a blog out of it. I do a, a MailChimp mailing and all that postings Perfect. to the, yeah, exactly. So have you but, seen a lot of traffic? Like, have you, do you track the um, analytics on either the emails or the um, blog post? So that's another, that's another reason why we're redoing all this stuff. So no, I have not been good at SEO and, and, um, you know, fine tuning my website. So I'm working with a friend of mine who I've worked with for a while. I do a lot of his legal work. He's helping me rebuild all this stuff because they're, they do for bigger companies, but he's helping me do the, you know, the, the digital marketing, the SEO, all that stuff, because ironically, like you said before, just putting out really good content brings you business. Like I get calls and connections for business all the time every day. And my SEO is terrible. So I know that content is really important. But yeah, I could fine tune the SEO, the website needs to be refined. And we're right in the middle of that whole process because of that like I, I'm, I mentioned before, if I go to a website, every page of my website should do something right. If you land there, you learn some information, you come into my world, you get on my mailing list, you get information, I follow up with you, we stay in touch. Mm -hmm. Most law firms do not do that at all. You go there, you can learn about their partners. You can learn about the practice areas. You, there's nothing, there's no call to action. There's no funnel, so to speak. There's no marketing system. They're just terrible at it. Yeah. I hate to criticize all of my colleagues, a but I see of, it consistently and I don't want to be that. So yeah, a lot yeah. of businesses are like that. It's so funny that you said that. I, I'm just so impressed because I've been building websites <laughs> for decades, quite honestly. And yeah. Uh, that's one thing I've, I've always said is like every page of your website is like a very valuable employee and they should have two things. They should have a job to do like an outcome and, right. and what it needs to do it just like you would with an employee. And so I love that you said that. People don't do my friend Rod, he taught me that. And he said, listen, you shouldn't have a page up here that doesn't do anything. It's, it's like a tiny little funnel. Yeah. I said, well, that makes sense. You know, but <laughs> a lot of lawyers don't think they get in, you know, business through the web. They think they yeah. get business locally and, and it's not true. So Yeah. And it could yeah. be true. And the other thing too, is that I love about like what you're doing and the way that you're answering questions of your ideal client, because I'm now I'm, I'm making a, an assumption here, but is this correct that your ideal client is also your ideal listener? Is that fair to say? Yes. Typically. It's fair to I say mean, it's typical of business owner. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you know, maybe my ideal client is a little bit more mature in their business. So they have money to pay me, but, and they have more things going on. So they're family owned business. They're have multiple partners in the business, but I, I always have a soft spot in my heart for entrepreneurs and people that are getting started, but a lot of times they don't have money to pay me. So we got to give them like a special deal up front until they get started. <laughs> you know, it's stuff. So just, yeah. Or send them the episodes that will help them the most. Like that's one yeah, thing but I They <laughs> refer, they're good referrers. They refer yeah. other people. They talk to their friends. Oh, you need to talk to Mitch. He's the guy. I mean, Perfect. I get people call me the weirdest things. They're like, I heard you're the guy. I'm like, for that type <laughs> of law? No, I'm not, but I'll get you somebody who does it. That's awesome. So yeah. 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 It's, it's all about the relationships for it's sure. All about top of mind relationships. Yeah. So do you have a social media strategy? Do I have a social media strategy? So probably eight months ago, I didn't. And now that I'm working with my friend, I'm starting to. So right now, my social media strategy is the, the podcasting twice a week. So those go up on social media. And then I, you know, like and post and, and I speak. So I'll put that out and stuff. But I'm going to, that's part of the whole redo is to come up with a more systematic, strategic social media strategy as part of the overall, because they all support each other, right? So, yeah. and, and the funny part is, like I said, I am busy and I do get a lot of business through all of my efforts and things. And it's not as strategic as I think it should be. Mm. Some of it's haphazard. You know, I used to, a friend used to tell me, you should post twice a day. I'm twice a day on what? Like I have work to do, <laughs> yeah. you know, so twice yeah. a week is a huge jump for me. So we're working on that as yeah. to get more strategic about it. What's nice is typically you can do the outbound, you know, systematically. It's yeah, it's the Schedule messy it. stuff that right. it's. I um, in fact, I've I've mentioned this on a couple other episodes, but 
Um, the next question leads to like getting onto groups and forums um, on LinkedIn or Facebook. Yeah. Are you doing that and answering oh, yeah. questions? So, and not podcasting groups, but um, no, groups legal groups, small yeah. business, business, small business group. Okay, yeah. perfect, perfect. Yeah. Because yeah, and I don't do enough of it. There was a time where I was doing even more. And then I would get somebody call me. I'd be like, why'd you call me? They're like, well, you were answering the questions. I figured you were the expert. <laughs> uh, you know, I never thought about that. So yeah, you go from, you know, this feast or fe you go from one thing to another. That's why I need a more strategic plan. So I know that I do this on this day and this on that day. And so I would say I'm 60% there in my good opinion. job. I don't say That's I'm fantastic. Yeah. That's really good. Um, yeah, I, I love that. In fact, a lot of times I found myself, I always call it pajama work because I feel like it's not really work. I feel like I'm just talking to people about what I love to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of times I'll try to, I'll do it like on a Saturday morning, <laughs> which probably isn't ideal, but um, a lot of times I'm either a hundred percent or 20% or 10%, you know? So, um, but I think the more uh, consistency is helpful, but at the end of the day, if you're doing it, it's huge and it works. So right. one thing that you saw that really stood out to me is the idea that once you're doing it, you just get busier. And so, yeah. um, having that, Systems not beating yourself up about it. it. Exactly. Right. exactly. But you know what? You're right. Because I, a friend of mine who's got a podcast called the E tribe, we did some dual episodes together. One thing he said to me early on was, listen, it's, it's not magic, but it seems like it's magic. If you just keep putting out consistent quality stuff and, you know, let's say we're not all perfect, right? We fall off the wagon all the time. You try to be strategic and you put in systems that keep it going and keep it going. B business will come. You'll get not notoriety. People will start to listen to your podcast. They will follow you. And sure enough, I mean, it took good. Eight I mean, the pandemic helps, right? Because I connected with so many more people, but yeah. I mean, 18 months in, you start to see things that are happening because you stick with it. A lot of people don't, mm. you know, they'll tell you, Tiffany, I, I posted on LinkedIn, nothing happened. Well, how many times did you post on LinkedIn? Like three, like three <laughs> times. And you're yeah. like, well, no wonder nothing you have to be, you have to be in the, you know, playing traffic to get hit. That's what I always say. Well, ultimately, if it's all about building our businesses, it takes about, it sounds terrible, but like it takes 10 years to be an overnight success. It just does. And it does, right? Yeah. And so if in podcasting, it takes even two years to be an overnight success, that is, you know, that is called leveraging. <laughs> yeah. You know? That is leverage yeah. right there. So um, I love, I love what you said is spot on. So um so on social media, when you're posting on social media, do you send them to your Podbean? Uh, site or are you, and I know you're in a transition, so it's kind of a good time to ask me. No, but. I think I do. Yeah. The links go to the, for the podcasting. Yeah. I send them right to the Podbean site. Okay. So does the blog. So do the emails like mail. I use MailChimp. Okay. Um, yeah. But and I, you know, I don't just post podcast stuff. I post legal stuff. I, you know, updates, things like that. Um, okay. And so forgive yeah. me. So buying hacker law. Yeah. Dot com, that's where your blog is. So whenever you talk about your right. blog, that's where it lives right now. It is. Yeah. So where is it? <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's a good question. <laughs> I see. can't find it. Let me <laughs> so see. I keep Am looking I, I and I'm, I'm like, a... uh, maybe it's just me, yeah, but maybe somebody moved it. Hold on a second. I don't know. Or I'm just missing it. I don't know. You know, maybe listening. that we didn't <laughs> add it to the let me see. Hold on. Oh no, I'm sorry. It's under about the practice buying hacker law blog. That's what it, that's where it is right now. About because I have practice. guests on different topics. It's oh, not just the podcasting. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna have to now that you pointed that out. I'm gonna have to figure that out as we make the transition. Just put a blog button on the top. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, you and me who program in HTML. I you know have this. That's not, one thing. It's like I'm like I want to do this, and I'm like I can't do this. I got to get somebody else to do it. So, yeah, yeah. Usually, no, that's, uh, that's a lot. Okay. Okay. That's, that's awesome. So I'm going to make a note because when we do the new website, we got to do put a blog. Okay. Blog button. Yeah. Yeah. It. And, it, and if you have someone helping you through that whole process, that's going to be really. Yeah. My friend Rod will perfect. do it. He'll be like, oh, that's easy. So, I'm like for you, yeah. it's easy. Not for yeah. me. He's going to be like, um, yeah, I don't barely worry. know how to do these postings. Yeah, exactly. He's going to be like, don't worry. Your blog will be at the top of the navigation bar. <laughs> That's what he promised me. So, yeah. so excellent. Well, I'm glad that I, um, I clarified because I do want to, I, I always like to take a look at the blog because it's so important. And I'll have to say like for my marketing uh, company, we do have our, 
we when we write a, a full on blog article about mm -hmm. an episode, we put it on our marketing page because it 100% relates to it. Just like for you, I'm sure that there are topics where it's like, yeah, it's on my practice blog because it, it related. completely relates to what I'm yeah. advising. I'm going to have to figure that whole thing out right now. The blog isn't even in the, doesn't even look the way I want it to look, but I wanted to get the content out there knowing yeah. that we were, you know, that's one of the problems with recreating stuff and you're always kind of redoing and then you're like, okay, great, but it's not static, you know? So yeah. I got it up and I said, listen, let's do this. We're moving to a new platform. The new website's not going to even be on WordPress, some other system. So but I didn't want to like, wait, not put the content out. So I'm like, listen, let's do this with the thumbnail, this, okay. And I get it out there because it's content. So it's important to me. So yeah. it doesn't look like I wanted to, but well, it, and it will. And, it and will. you're getting there. And I think that that's a great example for Process. anyone listening is that it's better to get the content out because people are going to be on Google and- Yeah, uh, it passes you by. They're going to be looking at a topic and then boom, up comes an actual post. And so right. I think- And it takes a while to get indexed, right? To really exactly. kind of show up and yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I think it's great that you're doing that. And I'm assuming that you're going to have the audio embedded or the video or both. Yeah, so that's, so I used to have, I don't even think it's there anymore. I used to have a page where the it was like a guest page let me see if, oh yeah. So if you go to podcasting, right? And you go to meet our guests, you see where that says yes. that? Yeah. Okay. So this was the original, it wasn't really a blog, but so originally, let me see if it's going to come up. I had, yeah, here it comes. There's a player at the top. You'll see it. I don't know if your system's faster than mine. <laughs> we're both um, on Zoom. So it's making everything take longer. <laughs> Yeah, no, right. Oh, yeah, that's like, right. That's yeah, exactly a little why bit it's now on video. Probably sorry, everybody. <laughs> yeah, so I had, uh, yeah, so Beinhacker Law, B E I N H A K E R Law.com. And you can right. follow along with us as we're looking. You can go. Yep. And then you go to podcasting, which is a drop down menu, and meet our podcast guests. Okay. So originally, I and they're just little book uh, blocks, right? So there's little windows with each guest, and there's the player at the top. Well, that was great until I had 160 episodes. You know how long that page is? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's when we switched to the blog. So I don't have a player on the blog yet because we're going to launch. I didn't even bother to. I wanted well, to finish the new website. So I don't want him to get distracted by helping me with things about the old website, which is probably yeah. a bad strategy, but that's kind of where we are. So. No, I think I think you're doing the right things. You're doing, yeah. and so it one will thing have a player. Yeah, it's important is taking the action and then the things that are getting traction, putting effort behind that instead of, you know, a lot of times we want to do everything. And at the beginning, we kind of need to, but then it's looking at what areas are working and then how do we optimize those areas? Right, Because if you don't launch, you don't get any analytics. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, okay. Awesome. Awesome. I think you just loaded up. What's, what's it called now? Google console. So we loaded it up on the web. They've changed. Google's always changing their tools. So it's <laughs> it like, just makes me tired. <laughs> yeah. So they're loading that up on the first website so they can see what was going on, what wasn't working with the old website and they can compare it to the new website. Oh. So I'm like, all right, here you go. And they're doing whatever they need to do. Yeah. Nice. Nice. I have no okay. idea. I've never seen the analytics. So. Awesome. Well, this has been really helpful. Um, before now, I know I just want to kind of get back to uh, your ultimate vision. I always want yeah. to keep the main thing, the main thing, right? So your ultimate vision is you want to help entrepreneurs make better decisions with their businesses. Right. And when you're looking at your podcast, again, the content's amazing, but it's the, when Appreciate we, it. when I, uh, when you approached me about being on the show and I reached out to you, it was all about like, do you want to talk about monetization or do you want to talk about preeminence, so profit or preeminence? And we chose the preeminence right. um, route. So we're going to talk about, so that's why a lot of this has to do with, you know, how do we get listeners? What listeners do you have? How do we, yeah, it's all helpful. I love it. Um, and so the next part, we're going to start to transition into the next part where I kind of talk about my take on things and then get your, your input and feedback on that. Sure. Um, but before we do, I just wanted to kind of um, hit that touchstone where it's like, ultimately you want to help people make better decisions with their business. Uh, before we transition, what do you believe is standing between you and fulfilling that vision for your show? I like to believe that there's really nothing standing in the way of it. I mean, I think it's just continue to put out the content, the same message we get, we get, you know, I've, I've talked to so many different people and there are themes and trends and learning that goes on. I'm learning. I hope the listeners are learning. It's like a university of, of experience from all these people that have 
some of which have failed their way to success, some of which came out of business school, some of which have technical degrees, some of which have no degrees, and they all have different stories and ideas to share. And that was the whole, you know, goal of the podcast. Um, you know, one of the reasons why I'm trying to do some series coming up and focus on industries is because I, you know, I feel like we've told a big story with 180, 100, 90, 200 episodes, whatever it is, I'll hit 200 soon. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so then what do you do from there? So I want to, you know, kind of step it up and let's do some real specific things for minority owned businesses, women owned businesses. I mentioned before we were, I think before we were on, like I'm looking at craft brewers now, I'm a oh, big yeah. bourbon drinker. So you probably won't extend my life, but I like bourbon. So <laughs> maybe, like, you know, there's craft distilleries. Yeah. Maybe it'll preserve my body and um, you know, stuff like that. So I'm thinking of, you know, maybe there's craft bakeries, craft candy makers around whatever. So we can kind of get into industries and share ideas and learn from everybody. And, and, you know, and maybe I help the guests too. I hope, I hope, but that's, you know, I, I don't think there's anything holding me back in that regard. Um, but I don't want to be complacent about it. I mean, I'm always trying to find out, do people like the content? Is it good? I listen to it. Yeah. Like, this sounds like shit. And then I have to check with somebody <laughs> else. What do you think? Oh, it was a great episode. I'm like, really? Are you sure? What about this? <laughs> you know, just like you, you're probably criti critical about <laughs> your stuff you know so yeah, yeah yeah I definitely am but um that's a whole nother topic but one thing I love about um and we did touch on this before the show I think it's really fantastic because we talked a little bit about people quitting and yeah. what I've seen is number one monetization like if people completely ignore monetizing I think you need to have a show that isn't harmed by monetization right. and that it shouldn't you know hurt the listener in any way, <laughs> but, um, but I do, if we ignore it completely, people quit. Like, there's just no way you can just do it forever and right. do all the, you ha you need money you start questioning, to like, pay someone else, right. you know, like, otherwise you're going to do the editing and you probably yeah. have a job, you know, <laughs> like you, like you're way too busy to be doing that kind of stuff. I know sometimes I don't that. Now I do have, I picked up a couple people through Upwork or uh, yeah, Upwork, like a woman in the Philippines and a guy in California. You know, it's like twenty or thirty dollars an episode. It's not a lot, but you know, there's sometimes when there's a certain episode or things that I need to do that I'm just like, you know what? It's just harder to explain it, and I'm gonna mm -hmm. have to redo it, and I just do it. But I have systematized that, so it only takes me like forty five minutes an episode to get it ready. That's awesome. That's um, awesome. But you're right. Yeah, I don't want to do this long. I mean, look, I tell people if you're if you want to start a podcast to make money, you're gonna be very disappointed. Mm -hmm. And so will but your listeners. <laughs> Yeah. Because <laughs> usually the motivation hurt, you know, like it's just bad. <laughs> I mean, very few people like, you know, Joe Rogan and Dak Shepard signed deals to go over on Spotify. Mm -hmm. I don't know what Dak Shepard got, but he's moving to Spotify. I'm not sure he's not doing it for no money. Yeah. So that doesn't happen, but it's a very good way to produce content. It's a very good way to promote your business, but you're right. If you want to keep in the race, you're not going to be able to do it yourself. And like me, I have a lot of trouble justifying spending a lot of money. I've had a lot of people approach me. Oh, we can do this for you. We can you, you hope, run your whole show and it's three or $4,000 a month. I'm not putting three or 4,000, you know, $50,000 a year into my podcast. Mm -hmm. Get, I, I said, listen, get me sponsors. You can keep the sponsor money or half the sponsor money or whatever. I'm mm -hmm. working on a couple of deals like that. There's always ways to do it, but it definitely has to be part of the equation. I agree. Exactly. With you 100%. Yeah. yeah. So ignoring it is not a good option. And the other thing is boredom. And that's one thing we talked about before. Um, and so yeah. I think this whole idea that you have of the, uh, the, the series and things like that, where you're getting into these industries, it's still, and that's why an audience audience promise is so important because then you can always, everything is through that filter. Everything right. is like, does it fulfill the audience promise? But somebody came up to me and I can't remember what, oh, they were in real estate. Oh, big shocker. They were in real oh, estate. Yeah. And they're like, you, you know, know, so little I, about that. Anyway. <laughs> you know, it was like, <laughs> what, um, I know podcasting and real estate, I just love it. I could do it all. There's and a lot of podcast, real estate podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I've had a bunch of good people on my, on my show. Yeah. So, but with, with somebody came up to me and they're like, oh, I really, and I live in Montana. So he was asking, would big it make country? I want to do a hunting podcast. And I was like, why do you think people move to Montana? <laughs> you right. know, I think that that's brilliant. Nobody wants to hear a real estate agent talk about real estate. Like that is the last thing. And I think that you've really captured that essence. And when you have an audience promise, there's always that true North. And so right. if you have an idea that you're, you know, for example, for our show, it's like, I promise that if somebody listens to the show, they can not only just have a podcast, but they can crush it. 
Right. And, um, so when we, when I'm like, I'm bored and I get, and I told you before I get bored super easy and I'm like, okay, I need a new series. So I'm going to take a break. Season's right. over. We're going to do this series. I've been a, in a perpetual season. <laughs> I've never taken a break. I probably should, but you're the best. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm terrible at that, but, but I also use my show for testing. So I'm usually also when I take a break, I'm messing around with the systems. I'm messing around with the processes and we've got this really great guesting platform and, and profit platform. And so I'm always yeah. like uh, updating that or upgrading it. And when I'm doing my own show, it's like, it's hard to change your process while you're using your process. So yeah, well, so, you so. know, chicken, the chicken and the egg, but exactly. you know, sometimes you just got to do it and change yep. it as you go and try it and things like that. You know, yeah. Believe funny, me, I think you got a couple of texts uh, that were different just because we were changing our system while you were getting your follow. Yeah, I got a lot so. of texts from you. I think I sent a lot of messages too. Somebody said, boy, I got reminded about your show a lot. So I took like one of them off. It was too, it was too many, but it's funny you say that because when I first started um, and yeah, that's why I came up with a tagline. So I do have a, a goal in mind for each of the shows and what our objective is. But when I first started, you know, I had four or five law partners, five or six law partners. And we were like, we're going to do like law, a law, a law podcast. We'll do things like if you have to go to municipal court, you bet. And I was like, oh, this is going to be great. And then I talked to a bunch of colleagues of mine and friends. They're like, that is very boring. Like, it is. <laughs> that's a, that's like, for yeah, attorneys. Nobody <laughs> wants to listen to that shit. I go, but they need it. He goes, doesn't yeah. matter. They're not going to listen to it. So I scrapped that whole idea. And then I eventually came up with the whole. Yeah. I mean, I would believe me, I would love to do a show on SEO and everybody wants to know about it, but nobody wants to hear about it. <laughs> I yeah. promise you. <laughs> yeah. I've done Same a couple thing. of those. I don't think I got a lot of downloads on it. It was good, good content, really good stuff, but people don't have the bandwidth no. to keep listening to it, stuff, it for yeah. like 30 seconds. They're like, you know what? I yeah. think I'm going to hire somebody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. It's okay. funny. I speak about podcasting now. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a self-proclaimed expert. So locally I speak about it. And there's always people. Anybody want to start a podcast? They raise their hand. By the end of the show, the, the speech, they're like, I don't want to do this. So I have some <laughs> studios I work with I could send you to, and they'll do the whole thing soup to nuts. Yeah. Because it's, it is overwhelming. You know? Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely, if you want to do it right, there's a lot to it. And to be consistent, it Gotta feels learn. mundane and it's yeah. hard to stick with it. So I, I wholeheartedly agree. Okay. So before we move into the part where I share, I'm going to share three things. I'm going to share number one, what I see you doing really, really well. Some of the things, cause I'm not going to be able to hit on all of them. Yeah. Well, don't stay on the too well stuff too long. We okay. want to go to the bad stuff, the improvement <laughs> stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm an open book. I don't care. That's I want awesome. to get better. Well, I made a really good list um, of the strong, and, and I think I told you a lot of the stuff I like already. So yeah. the second part will be some areas of opportunity, not necessarily in any order, just, you know, yeah. vomit. Do I get I'm to take gonna... notes during that portion of Yes. The... And, okay, and, I good. and I will get these out to you. I'm a little bit slow on getting them out. So if you take notes, you can actually okay, use them quicker. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then the third part will be if I'm boss of the world, this was my delivery on my promise where I'll give you an actionable step that I think will get you the quickest return with awesome. the least amount of effort. So awesome. Well, let's get to it. So do I have your permission to transition into the next part? You have my permission to awesome. Awesome. Before I do, I want to, I always start with the four P's of preeminence. Um, and for all four of these things have to be present, I believe, and what I've seen and studied for the last however many years, um, to really gain those listeners. So, I mean, we can spend a year podcasting, but I believe if you don't have these things, you're going to end the year going, I thought everybody said I was going to have a lot of practice listeners. Practice doesn't make perfect, right? You got to practice <laughs> the right things. Perfect practice. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Um, so number one is know your purpose, which we talked about at the beginning, your why, why you're doing it. Um, because without it, it's hard to stay inspired to continually yep. do you it. Burn out. Day out. You drop it. Uh, Number two is to know your people really dial in on your audience messaging so that they want to listen once you work so hard to get them there. So, uh, once they're there also promotion. So getting them there, uh, needs to be addressed, which you're doing a great job at. You've got a lot of things in place. You've been doing things. And then I, it's clear that you're really digging into those things, um, and improving them now, which I think in the timeline of your show is ideal. And then number four is the proceeds. So it's getting that profit so that you can delegate that there's an actual ROI attached to it versus yeah. like you were saying, like, I'm not going to just pour $50,000 in a year out to it. Um, but there is a point where you can have a measurable ROI that it would make sense as well. So, right. Uh, but today we're going to talk about, um, 
how to get that preeminence. So first I'm going to start with things that I see that you're really, really strong at. Uh, first of all, you have a great podcast voice, which I, I do. Think people, yes, you do. So that's really I, good. I think that was the hardest thing is listening to myself, <laughs> like on the radio when I'm listening in the car, it, it freaked me out. Yeah. Does it, it Cause your voice doesn't sound to you. Like it sounds to everyone else. You have a very nice voice too. Oh, well, thank you. You probably so, don't think that though. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> But one thing I found is as a podcaster, a lot of people are really worried starting podcasting that they hate listening to the voice, but you have to, like, you can't, right. if you don't, you're going to fail. Like just quit, right. turn off the mic. Go movies home. are different. You don't watch yourself in the movies because <laughs> you have a director and somebody <laughs> makes the movie or whatever. Right. So unless yeah. you're paying, you know, five figures a year for someone to direct you, then you need to listen to your show. Um, right. Have you, did you find that you got more used to hearing your voice after you? Oh, very much so. Event? Yeah. No, now yeah. I'm used to hearing my voice. And, and I don't know if it's the tone. I get that a lot that, Oh, you have a voice for radio. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I have a good mic. I have no idea, but <laughs> I don't know what that means. Like, okay. I, you know what okay. I mean? Like you said, I have a good voice for podcasting. What, what does that mean? Well, I think, I think it doesn't. Okay. So this is such a weird this analogy, but it, to you, it totally makes me think of this. So my daughter was Miss Montana teen. Very and nice. so she, when she competed, she has a different look. I mean, she's absolutely drop dead gorgeous, but imagine. she doesn't look like, she doesn't look like Barbie. Like she's not blonde hair, blue eyed. And they didn't want anybody who was blonde hair, blue eyed. And that was one of the things that they said. And she actually had a gap between her front two teeth and she always wanted it fit, you know, fixed. And I was right. like, no, like you are so beautiful. So how about this? How about if you go compete? Like she's not a beauty queen at, I mean, she's, she's gorgeous, but she's not like a beauty queen. She's an athlete. So it was okay. a little bit weird that she was doing it. Um, and we lived in a little tiny, tiny town in Montana where everyone is a rancher. So it was a little bit weird to them that she would ever <laughs> even want to compete in a pageant. Right. So she did, um, and she won. So here we were, we showed up and, you know, she's got all her clothes shoved into this suitcase, like beautiful gowns and everyone else has got these racks and right. oh, makeup yeah. people. And yeah. she's just like showing up, barely knows how to put her, you know, I mean, she knows how to put makeup on, but just not important to her, right. but she's got, she's just so naturally beautiful and she just radiates it. And I feel like we want different. Like we just don't want to hear that radio voice that we all hear all the time, but right. yet there's a tone that you need to have as an, a speaker right. that, I mean, you know, it, you know, that when you get up yes. and there are certain things you have to do as a speaker that yeah. are not going to be annoying. <laughs> you know, no. the first rule is don't annoy people when you're talking. Right. Um, so I feel like you have that good tone, but yet you don't sound like every other radio person. That's how yeah, it like, stood out. I to guess me, that's so. just luck though. That wasn't like intended. Regardless, like use what you have. Thank this is about leveraging the things that work. Yeah, so. I guess <laughs> genetics. I don't think it's anything else. So I didn't go so, to voice school. You know, I didn't take <laughs> voice lessons. I just got on the mic, you know? Okay. Okay. So regardless, good job. So I appreciate by it. accident or on purpose, I just I'm not think, good at taking compliments. <laughs> clearly. So, <laughs> so with that, I just want, I just, I think it's really important for people to know too. I've had a lot of people on my show that I felt the same way where it's like, you don't sound like everybody else. Um, and so if like for myself, if I was like, wow, everybody's telling me that I have a good voice. So how could I improve it? So again, it's like all about leveraging what other people are already saying and how can yeah. we be better in that area? So it's not like, oh, look, Mitch, you've arrived. You're like the best speaker I've ever heard. But I right. am saying like, you have a really great voice on the podcast. And so lean into that okay. um, and great energy. Voice. Yeah. Don't protect yeah. <laughs> Like just don't do anything different. <laughs> I lose other than, my voice like... <laughs> and it comes back like Mariah Carey. She can't sing anymore. You know, I don't want that to happen. No, it's not going to happen. This isn't to jinx you. This is just feedback. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Number two uh, is you have a really good energy with your, with your guests. I like that um, it moves and yeah. yet it is warm, but it doesn't just stay in the same spot. So I just, I think you've got a good energy. You don't cut, you know, like you keep it moving without it feeling. I think it's important. It, I think that comes connection. through, right? I think mm -hmm. that comes through to people. If you're like boring or you're drab, they get depressed and they're like, why am I, I don't want to listen to this. And they turn <laughs> off the, yeah. yeah. You gotta be, look, I told you before we were on the mic, I've been on with people and I'm thinking, how in the world am I going to make this interesting? <laughs> this is like a pulling, I pull my teeth out a bit better. I haven't hit so, record and I already want to quit. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, it definitely, it comes across and your, and your guests are awesome. So I don't know if they just arrive that way. I don't think that it's an accident. I've heard a lot of like with, especially with the podcast that I do right now, 
with every single guest, I go and I listen to their show, but I yeah. study it. I don't, I'm not like, sometimes I'm like, oh, wow, this is so good. Like I'm getting so much from this, but usually I start with an attitude of I'm, I'm studying things about the show. And, um, so I, try I to just, do like a pre-chat, like meet them for 15 minutes. I mean, I'll listen to their show. We didn't meet before, but, yeah. um, I want to kind of size them up like, oh my God, is this going to be like a horrific experience or can I make them sound really interesting and fun? And do they have a good personality and yeah. they come across good on camera, you know, that type of stuff. So I, what I've if had a they don't, of, would you like cancel? No, I mean, they know I'm evaluating <laughs> them. So I, I'll tell them, listen, we have a lot of guests coming on. We're making our decision soon. Let me just think about it and think yeah. if I can do it. Sometimes I say, listen, I don't know enough about what you do to make this interesting, but why don't you try these type of podcasts or whatever? Mm. I don't know. Oh, good. So it kind of turns into a, okay, it's, it's not you, it's me. So yeah. It's kind of like, the there's show. a voice in my head, <laughs> Tiffany, that says, how in the world are you going to get out from having these people on your show? Because Tiffany yeah. referred them to you and now you're talking to them. I've had a couple of those that I had to take on the show. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I just, I made it interesting. It's my job. Well, and, and two, like there's a screening, like we have a screening process and yeah. sometimes it'll get passed. In fact, I had to cancel one recently that, and I, I, I can count on one hand that I've done that, but I've just recently done about four of them where I yeah. should have done that. And I finally just this time went, and I mean, I'm telling you, they have a ton of followers. It would have helped, you know, boost I've done my that show. with people have a lot of followers. Yeah. Yeah. But I was like this one, I was just like, I know I'm probably, I don't know if this is a mistake or not, but I'm just not going to do it because I care about the show. <laughs> like I, yeah. It's just so, and, and this person is a great speaker, great content, probably would have had like all these great ideas for people. But I like, I like that you have that where you're, you've got a, you've got a process where you can um, avoid those moments. So I think that's, you know, really you know, it's also from an objective standpoint, if, if they're not going to be a good guest, it doesn't help them either. No, no. You know, it might make them look bad. Yeah. I don't want to be the person responsible for me. I don't know if you heard that noise. It's like thundering and lightning here. Um, I don't want to be, you didn't hear that? The mic no. doesn't pick that up. Oh, that's good. No, the dogs are barking here. I couldn't hear I don't anything. hear that either. No. <laughs> okay. Um, that's good. We have good microphones. <laughs> yeah. the, I, like I really, I, I feel that way. Like if I'm bringing somebody on the show and I can't highlight them and make them look good because I don't understand what they do or they, they don't have the personality for it or whatever, or they have an accent and I'm like, I can't even understand them. <laughs> I've had a couple of those like from yeah. China and different places. I could, I just couldn't and take them on the show. Yeah. Um, then I'm doing them a disservice. That's yeah. kind of how I look at it. You know? Yeah. Okay. Well, let me, let me get through this. I want to honor our, our time. I'm and good with that. time, but so, you're probably busier than me. I don't, know. Um, well, I don't know if I'm busier than you. I know <laughs> that you're a busy attorney and everything. I just know that I, that we, um, I, I'm really like, I, I'm, I, I value keeping my promises. So yeah, I just well, want to okay. make sure I, I blew that. our last, uh, <laughs> interview. So I blocked out my afternoon because I want to be available to you. Well, you're awesome. You're awesome. So, okay. So your sound quality is amazing. Obviously it's professional. You have a great mic, makes a big difference. You yeah. edit it. You care about that. Uh, you, okay. This is another thing I love. Um, and more and more people are doing this. I'm so happy is that cold open that clip at the beginning that really engages people. Yeah. The hook. Yeah, the hook. And um, I, you I know how many people your... write to me and they go, I was listening to the episode. I think it's broken. Oh. It started right <laughs> in the middle. And I said, how long did you listen? Don't you keep? <laughs> so I had to explain it to them. I've yeah. done that two dozen times. I, yeah. I don't know what's people's problem. No, I don't know. And, and yeah. it's them. It's not you. So yeah, okay. anybody who's listening, just, I mean, you're a podcaster. If you're listening to the show, um, just if your listeners give you a hard time about that, it it got them listening. And that's really ultimately what you that's want. the point of it, right? Exactly. So, um, and then also the affiliate companies make sense. I'm always looking for that when people are advertising or doing anything, I feel like it needs to be an, a next step that makes sense. And I think that, um, I was actually like writing down the names of companies uh, or writing oh, yeah. down some of it. I don't think I ended up using them yet. Cause I'm I, I'm such a geek about trying out new things. I sometimes I it's like a diet. Like I've got it. Okay, no, now I'm I the same way. Here's stuff on the, and I'm in the car, and I'm like, oh, how am I going to remember that? I got it, you know. And I check it yeah. out. Yeah. Okay, and then um, yeah, yeah. So let's see. Oh, in fact, even uh, who's that author? Maxwell. Um, uh, Malcolm. Uh, Malcolm Glad Gladwell. Gladwell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I love him. He's so, got great stuff. So is, He's just so great. And yeah. so I just had to comment. Um, in fact, I was supposed to write that down so I would remember it. But 
Um, I always listen to podca the podcast before my interview while I'm getting ready for the day. So I don't always like capture all the information, but, but there was like at the end of the hook of the one where you were talking about, you were interviewing about, um, trusting your gut. Yeah. And at the very end of the hook, it's like talking about how he was wrong about, yeah. you know, I'm <laughs> like, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. That that's is why like the I best used hook that one. ever. Yeah. Well, cause that's why I want to talk to Gleb about it. Uh, he wrote a book called never go with your gut. And it's totally contrary to the, to the blink theory. And, okay. and, it's interesting. I mean, I love Malcolm Gladwell. I love his stuff. Revisionist yeah. History is a great podcast. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it's flawed data. And that's a whole nother, we can do a whole nother podcast. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. listen to that episode. Um, yeah. If you're listening to this right now. Just came out great. today. Or, awesome. Yeah, okay, well, let's move into some areas of opportunity. Good, let's do it. Yes. So um, number one is the blog. So, it, yep. you know, you're working on that. We talked about it as we went. Um, I highly recommend when you do the blog, I love your approach where you're already thinking of how can this capture leads? How can this be a landing page? Love it. Um, make sure to embed either. I prefer either the audio um, player. So through Podbean, yeah. you can just that yeah, episode there's the can code be embedded they give it to you, right? Because then someone's like a lot of people are like, I'm reading it. I don't really care about that. And then boom, people, you know that they're it. listening to it. Exactly. So, and it helps with the SEO as well. So, um, so dual happiness on that. Yeah, I think I'm just going to start putting the player right in there until I get to the new website. We'll figure that out then. That's a good yeah. idea. And yeah, if you can do the do episode that. itself, it's ideal because you think about it, someone's Googling the topic, like they're like, tell me about instincts. And then they come yeah. up with that episode. And then that episode can play right on that page. It's just, um, it's perfect. So um, also um, this is so minor and you barely need to do it, but just it is an audio show and, you know, people can, the nice thing is, is nowadays we can actually click links in the description, which we couldn't right. do before. Yeah. Um, so, you know, with your website and things like that, you can enter it into that. Just make sure that it's consistent about where you're sending people. So they're either going to Podbean, don't do that, but, or send them to your website. So you're driving more traffic to your website. Um, like I know for us, we're always optimizing for something. So yeah. sometimes we'll pick like, oh, we want to optimize this campaign to go to YouTube. Um, but for the most part, if you're building this whole website and you've got the landing page, you have full control over that. You have control over the SEO. Then you want in your social media, you want to be consistent about driving traffic to that as well. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, the show notes I use, Google keep or something. And the oh. show notes are always, I mean, there's stuff about the guest and then the bottom is always the same. The links to the website. I don't think I have a link directly to the, I don't remember. I got to look, I'm okay. going to check on that. And then also, um, let's see, you didn't, did you remove your disclaimer from the beginning of the show? No, it, it's, it's, still... it's, it's after the hook. Okay. Okay. Good, good, good. You, you want to know the, you want to know the derivation of that? So New Jersey ethics. I'm a lawyer, right? So I call up the ethics department. Like, what do I need to do if I'm doing a podcast? Do I have to, like, I'm talking about legal topics and business advice, whatever. They have no rules. Like, they don't even know. I don't know. We don't have any lawyers have podcasts. I don't know what we can. So I made up this disclaimer for me. And for now, until things change and there's rulings, I'm just going to leave it in. So. Awesome. Well, um, I think it's really good that you have it. Um, I just would suggest maybe doing it if there's a way to do it at the end, that would be the best. But if you're, but you're the attorney, so tell I'm me not that. giving like you should. Yeah, that was the problem. Like I was concerned that if it was buried at the end and then the ethics department comes back and says, oh, that's got to be up front. I could yeah. say, oh, mine is up front, you know, type of thing. So I've toy, I've wave, I've waffled on that, but I have been given that advice. Like people don't want to hear that. Yeah. And especially because you have a lot of affiliate stuff that happens yeah, at the beginning. the beginning, right? I feel like there's a lot of work the listener has to go through. Yeah, I'll, like I'll do just, some research on it. Okay. Yeah. So I had messed around with, um, so, and also just, I can't remember, is the affiliate, um, ad, like, it feels like advertising are the ads before or after your hook? Isn't, aren't your ads first? Am the, I remembering that? Not correctly? really there. I, I do have an opening that mentions them the the really the real ads are in the mid roll in the middle of the episode. Okay. It's very short. It's only like 30 seconds at the beginning. Yeah. So so imagine the user you have driven them to your podcast, you have hooked them with the title, 
they've looked, they've gone, okay, what's this about? They've looked at the description and then they've committed to listening to your show. You just want to make sure you grab them and keep them. So the first, well, maybe I should put the hook first. I can move it the slide it back. Yeah. I would highly recommend that. Exactly. And then, uh, let's see here. Um, Okay, and this is such a nuance. I'm, I'm such a marketing nerd. I just have to admit that okay, first I before I say it. it. So um, I, first of all, I love your show. I love what it's about. I love that it's the accidental entrepreneur, the fact that, I mean, I actually heard someone say it completely, hadn't even heard of your show, but was using that term. Yeah, I've seen the In term fact, on books it, and other things, yeah. Yeah, and so it made me think of your show because I'd already done research on it. So I was like, oh, there's a podcast called Accidental Entrepreneur. Um, I would, I, I, and maybe this was just the episode I was listening to too, but I picture you as being the hero. Like, so it's an accident where they're at a right now pressure. and they're just kind of leaning into it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really they're the hero, but you're like, you know, Jeeves, you're not you're the one I'm like going there to help, help them. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's you're a lot Albert of for Batman, right? So, yeah, right. Did I get my superheroes right? Alfred. That's right, right? Yeah. Alfred, Alfred. okay. Yeah. And so, so with that, um, yes, it's an accident. That's the problem. Like really, that's the problem that you're solving. That, you're right. It is, the like, problem is that everybody's doing it by accident. Yeah. So they just kind of stumble along and they're like, wow, that worked, which is yeah. awesome because it means they're taking an action before everything's perfect. They're like just doing it. They have proof of concept. And then they're like, oh my gosh, I have a business. What do I do right. now? And yeah. then you, you swoop in and you're like, you're going to be on purpose now. Like you're, right. this is, you're going to take what's already working for you and you're going to turn it into something even more amazing because it's already amazing because people are already loving it. Um, And so just kind of leaning into that because um, although, you know, entrepreneurs are kind of a mess and we do just kind of do crap before we know, um, sometimes it works. And that's really, those are the people that you want. You want the ones who are just realizing, geez, that just worked because then they have something to work with. And um, it's going to be, it's a shorter line between them and success. And but that's a really hard gap to cross. So you're kind it of is. helping them go like, do it. Like you're like, it feels like you're looking over that gap, but you just made it through what most people can't make it through. So yeah, this a lot gap of people really don't isn't a big deal. Across. Yeah, exactly. So, so for me, like I would say, if you were able to develop an audience message that you were like, at the beginning of the episode, you're really clear about like talking about the accidental entrepreneur. But if you just added that little part where you're there to help them get across that gap kind of, or something like that. So that it's like, you suck because you've done it, <laughs> done it by accident, but then now you're awesome because you're wanting to improve and, you know, make it to the end. Is that helpful? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then let's see the, a lot of these are from my research from before. So let me see here. Um, yeah. Again, I made another note about like, it just, and I, I feel like the last show I listened to the beginning to get to the meat of the show was quicker. Whereas I feel like when I listened to it a couple of weeks ago or a month ago, it was like, it felt like it was really long before we actually got to the meat of the show. So yeah, I love maybe that. I trimmed that down. Some of the, some of the hooks are longer than others. I don't know. I try yeah. and keep it under like a minute, minute 30. Yeah. Okay. So those are all the opportunities that I see. Like some of them are practical. Some of them are not maybe, but do you have any questions or feedback about any of that? No, this whole discussion is great. I love talking about it. Yeah. Then I'll share my, like, if I was the boss of the world and you could do one thing, I'm going to share actionable advice, actionable steps. And I'm going to tell you two, and I just want you to pick one, but a lot of times what happens is I'll say one and, and it's like, not practical, but <laughs> is there anything that I just shared that you feel like that's just not practical? I can't imagine myself doing that. No, they're all things I'm going to look into and change okay. and play around with. And some Perfect. of it, I got to work on like clarifying the purpose in this. Thing. I got to figure out what would I say and how would I say, you know, Yeah. but it's all yeah. good stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Great. So the number one thing I would say is just getting that first minute capturing people, because I feel like you're getting the listeners I just want you to keep the listeners once you get them there. The other thing is use your audience promise. I just think um, you're just onto something and um, people are already getting it how it is. So it's not right. like you have to do it, but I just think it would optimize the opportunity. No, I think we talked about that, that I, and that's one of the things I think that in my mind, I know what I'm doing, but I don't think it's as clear and evident as it could be. So I'm going to definitely, that's great. Yeah, they're both cool. great. 
cool. the capturing awesome. thing, well, I'm going to start by moving the hook to the beginning. So that'll yes. help. That will help a ton. That will help a lot. So, yeah. um, and Perfect. then if you can move the disclaimer to the end, and then if they tell you, you yeah, need I made to a move note to the beginning, you question can move mark, it to the do research. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Um, did you do you have so that's what I have. That's th awesome. that's the gist of it. So do you have any other questions or or comments or something I didn't ask that maybe I should have or something else? No, this is a great okay. discussion. I think that uh, I appreciate you having me on and highlighting my show and giving me the advice and I. I hope that it helps other people that are looking to use podcasting as a way to grow their business and grow their influence and share their message and help other people. So I love the platform. I love the, the fact that it's so readily accessible nowadays, but you know, it's definitely something that takes the, the time and, and the interest in learning and becoming, you know, good at it. Um, definitely. Like you talk about your voice and stuff, doing it a lot is what helps you, right? Yeah. So you do a hundred listening to 50, it. 200, yeah, <laughs> listening to it. I mean, there were a lot of things I listened to. I'm like, that doesn't sound good. And you know, you adjust it or you ask people questions and, and feedback helps. So yeah, well, this is, this is great. So I love the whole idea of behind your podcast about bringing oh. people on and helping us and sharing yeah. the things. So I'm going to get you on Podmax. Uh, yeah. Well, well, well and I'm sure that guys. what you've shared, a lot of people can relate to. So even if someone was listening and you're able just to get one thing out of it. I just think that it's amazing how one little adjustment can make a huge difference. And to everybody who's listening, um, be sure that you go check out The Accidental Entrepreneur. You can get it on any of your favorite podcasting platforms or go to accidentalentrepreneur.podbean.com and um, watch for the new website, it sounds like, that's coming out. The new website, the book, um, my series. I just put a LinkedIn post about I want people to refer breweries to me. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Is that nationwide or locally? Well, or? it's nationwide, but if you ever do a search for like craft breweries, you're going to get oh, there's a million. thousands of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I got to, I'd like it to be somewhere I could go and visit the brewery. Ooh. So hopefully it's in this area. We'll see. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So if you are, brew and where do you live so that we can I live do a outside of right New now? York City in Westfield, New Jersey. I'm like, five miles due west of Staten Island, if people know what Staten Island is. Okay, yeah. so kind of anywhere in that general vicinity. If but you... I have gone fishing in Montana. I just want you oh. to know, I've, I've fished the Bitterroot Mountains in Montana. Oh, very nice. Yeah, yeah fishing in Montana is the it's best for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so do you, yeah, I could go talk about that. Um, so you gotta <laughs> say fly fishing? Yes. Fly fishing, yeah. Yes, okay. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So, well, Mitch, thank you again so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. And hey, everybody who's listening, don't be average. Be brave, take action, and make magic happen. Thank you so much for listening.